what aspects should they make priority when it comes to sales and marketing? The priority is making sure you are selling the right thing and the product, which is the offering, because it can be a service sometimes, yeah. you know, that is the first thing to attack. Mm. If people don't need what you are offering or if what you are offering does not, is not a want, it's not necessary, you are literally wasting your time and you'll be putting so much effort in doing the wrong thing. So if you want to start a business or you, you, are, you are doing a business, the most critical thing to focus on at the very beginning, the very least you can do is come to market with the right product. But there's one thing about that because like I say, I'm going back to this affordability thing mm -hmm. because you know, you don't have you don't get to test your you don't have as much resources to test your product mm -hmm. there's so much you cannot do as a small business and if you start to analyze and, and analyze you mm -hmm. just realize that you can get stuck mm -hmm. so that balance mm -hmm. of you know you know getting that product right not wasting too much time mm -hmm. you know that's mvp that minimum viable product mm -hmm. like it's tricky it is it's why you cannot look at the products in isolation mm -hmm. right the right product yes but the right product for who so the first thing to do is to do an audit of the business what are they doing currently do you have the right products if you do have the right products and you've identified your right target audience or the people you want to sell to and you have that clearly then we will look at the other elements, which are how much are you selling for? And how much are the people you are selling to willing to pay for it? Where are you selling? How convenient is it for the people that you're selling to to buy from you, mm -hmm. right? And how much do you invest in creating awareness? As a summary, the most important thing I would recommend for small businesses who think that everything they are doing is not working. I'm like, I'm doing a lot of marketing, but people don't buy from me. I would say let's audit your marketing okay. and let's look through the piece of marketing and see where exactly are you today? Where exactly have you positioned your business and then where do you need to? So for SMEs, I would say look at what we call the piece of marketing and look across if you are ticking the box. Okay. Because what I've seen with a lot of small businesses is they actually don't have um, marketing as part of what they are doing. They are just selling, you know, once you have an Instagram page or you list your products in a store, sure. you know, you just start selling. There is really no thought process, right? There is no marketing process, if I'm to put it that way. Hmm? Mm. Because door to door, the one-on-one -on -one marketing, right? is still something that exists today, even though we now have digital. We have people who are selling, um, air bundles at 300 400 500k right and when they are doing their targeted ads they know who they are targeting that's why they are targeted ads because you know you can target people yeah. by their um demographic mm -hmm. right so it's the same way we have people that will continue doing promo who say who say eh, oh, go promo 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 even though half of this is fake but we know that there are people that will sell 50k 100k you know they will never sell anything below 100k mm -hmm. and they are getting their customers so yeah. it's that they've made it like look i'm bringing a vietnam air right whether it's from vietnam or not i'm calling it vietnam air but this is who i'm targeting i'm targeting women who live in this area that area who follow so 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 people who do this who do that and work in this kind of jobs yes, yes. right so if you've done all of that, you will be able to create a niche. If you're going to get a shop in a particular part of Lagos, you understand who you're selling to. It's mm. a strategy. But if you don't, you know, put that out first of all, you don't even have any strategy to go with because you don't even know who you're selling to. And it's fine at the beginning because at the beginning, most people start their small businesses to survive. I always want to reiterate that and it's fine but the moment you come up from the survival mode it's best to put a plan behind your business so that it's sustainable going forward
and so what habits would you say um big companies marketing habits would you say they have that smes should definitely adopt mm. for their marketing so there is nothing mm. you are doing big right mm -hmm. that you shouldn't actually be thinking first of all as a small business right and if you're doing if you're if you're a small business you should also be thinking how do i get this right so i can scale up so yes what should what habit i think you should start to actively drive as a small business number one will be data you have a gut feeling and then you go with it that's how small businesses run you just wake up in the morning and say ha people have stayed wearing yellow all the clothes and bag we are going to make this month will be yellow where is the data behind that who are the people the two people in your family or you know you saw five <laughs> people in your compound you know there should be data to back it and that's where research and development comes in so i think that no matter how small your company is right um especially if you're not just selling buying and selling and even if you're buying and selling you can do an estimate do your research to understand what do you think people need today and what would they need tomorrow so if you started a business last year and you want to come into this year if you want to invest more in the business what will determine how much you should invest in the business it should be your data from your track record right mm -hmm. how much did i sell last year but then how many people keep a record right when was my peak period when is my low period what drives my peak period is my business affected by weather do you understand yeah, is it affected totally, by I fasting totally get that. Mm -hmm. is there a process to put this data yeah. together in yeah. your business today yeah right so it's not about just me you know i mean i'm a small company i don't have a big lab you don't have a big lab but you should test have a process for putting your data together, together. so that it can inform your decisions in, in in future but a lot of small businesses have to focus they are just not putting structure into mm -hmm. it so you you know my husband runs a buka yes, in I lagos do. two days ago he told me he ran out of a then he has to, he doesn't source his Elubo in Lagos, you know, he brings it from mm -hmm. Ubumosho yeah. because it has to be from Ubumosho. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he said they ran out of Elubo. Like, no part of me could relate. <laughs> like, how? <laughs> how? <laughs> no, but he does that thing where, you know, he knows that, um, you know, we need 30 bags every month and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. So there must there could have been something that happened, or he probably forecasted wrong. But guess what? What should he do going forward? He should look at the trend. There are certain months where you have a spike driven by something. What drove that spike? Yes, and true. that's what a lot of small businesses don't true. do. And that and you can sell without having a budget for marketing, but it is not sustainable if you're going to try to create a brand for yourself. If you're going to differentiate, if you're going to position, you can't do that without a budget. So for your continuity, for your brand positioning, you know, for creating an image, you need a budget and you need a consistent budget. You've brought the product that they need. Two, you've given them at a price they can pay. You've put it in the places where it's convenient for them to speak mm -hmm. and they are well aware of your brand. When you do that very well over a period of time, then you've created a brand for yourself. So it's safe to say that marketing is like, is long term. It's long term and it's not sales. It's just safe to understand that marketing is not safe. Right? Yeah. So you can always enter a road and start forcing people you know try your best and all of that but marketing mm -hmm. is what you do so that that salesperson doesn't need to spend so much time convincing, convincing people to buy people to buy mm -hmm. or what are the marketing mistakes you see businesses make online those ones that really make you cringe the ones that make me really cringe number one will be um inconvenient parts to purchase right dm me for price dm for <laughs> price is ah uh, i know people say it a lot and say oh um um 
you know, it's very annoying. They say it as part of a banter, but as a marketer, I'll tell you why it is even beyond banter. There's a process between creating awareness and convincing people to try it. The fact that people are aware of your products does not mean they will try it. They go through a whole journey before they get to purchase. Now, when they get to purchase and you make it difficult for them to purchase, they switch and they switch off. Except again, and that's where marketing is beautiful. If you are extremely exclusive, if you've created such a position for yourself in the market, in your category, such that you are so exclusive, it may work for you. It may even be a very good marketing tactic for you. But Shalewa, <laughs> if there are 20 of you, <laughs> You know, especially online, yeah. because the moment you search for a product or you attempt to buy a product, the moment you are not able to close, even when you close the purchase of that product, every time you go on your explore page on any platform, you start to see numerous ads of that same yeah, product. Happens, so the moment you're put, closing your purchase is difficult, you've not just lost um a potential customer you've helped another person get a customer it's making your purchase seamless is very important the other part is also your response time if you have said that your business opens at 8 and it closes by 8 a.m and closes by 8 p.m it's best that you stick to it because again somebody chats you at 9 a.m because you don't have a physical store where people knock on your shop and then you are inside 9 a.m you don't respond till 5 p.m who who is sitting in front of their phone trying to buy a turban and waiting till 5 p.m the turban <laughs> they want to use for wedding tomorrow you know be language right language um People say anything to sell and what they don't realize is they are not creating a position for themselves in the market. And by market, I mean the mind, the mind of the consumer. You just come and start shouting, cheap, 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 oh, cheapest, don't have the cheapest you ever. <sighs> Language, you know, there is a way to drive value without degrading your product or making, you know, the person who is buying it feel like they are cheap. So yes, you might get people buying, but then one day they are like, oh God, I'm bougie. <laughs> <laughs> and they move on from your very cheap yes. brand, you know. So you, it's important to understand the language that you want to be consistent with your brand when you're creating it. Would also be um, inconsistency in the way you present your brand. Not create, just posting content without any form of thought process. But if you created your own product or your own service, it would be okay, nice if you can create a calendar, create your distinct colors, distinct fonts, the things that make your consumers identify you easily, right? That's what will differentiate you. Understand the elements of making your content relevant to the people consuming it so they don't just flip away. Also, understand the media guidelines for whatever channel you're posting. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what I mean. Um, before we had this session, I had asked you how many minutes is YouTube, is a, is a YouTube video that is impactful? Every channel actually has, you know, for Instagram, it's six seconds. Mm. As for people who are selling products, understanding when I need a new pair of shoes, what would I search for? Shoes in Lagos. For small businesses in mm. marketing, I would say, if it's, especially when you're not tech savvy, I think you should outsource your digital. However, I think you should keep your digital sales in house. So if you are doing your own business and you know that you know canva is not your strength i know people go and do canva classes and all but if you have the resources for example and you want to spend more time on the farm get a content creator who is very good at it who, they don't need to be exclusive to you they just need to be very good when you own your business as an sme 
you understand that you are in a local market you speak the local you know, language yeah. and you can make your decision this the decision making process for businesses is what actually keeps a business going so mm. that strength having that strength is something i think that smes should take as much advantage of because except you are scared to fail here again we know we're in nigeria a lot of things can happen but there is always a time when you can just decide i want to extend this business i want to contrast this business